Happy football season, everybody. It's Scott. And it's Landon. And we're going to do something a little bit different today. Look, usually you get to hear from one person. And today we're going to team teach. All right? So you get to hear from both of us. I know you're thrilled. Lucky you. So we were thinking about what it's like to be you. High school student in 2021. School's back. Beginning of the new year. Uh, around people, which is fantastic. Uh, here at HSM, we love being around people. Uh, one of our favorite things is actually seeing you all grow closer together, which is why small groups are awesome. Mm -hmm. And the whole online school distancing, distance learning thing had plenty of downsides, but there may have actually been one potential benefit. Perhaps you agree with this. While it's wonderful to be together, I don't know if you've noticed, but human beings, which we all are, tend to not get along all the time. Now, it doesn't take long to look around culture or maybe your school or your friend circles and begin to see dysfunction and distrust. Now, it's not all bad, but we all struggle at times with relationships, with friendships. So, uh, we're going to talk for the next three weeks and learn how to do relationships, friendships well in a series called, and I love this title, Help Me, I'm Human. And Scott is going to kick this off with our key verse for today. Hey, thanks, Landon. So, let me just hit you with a verse that we're looking at today right off the bat. It's from the book of Proverbs, and it says this, there are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. It's from Proverbs, 20, uh, from Proverbs 18, 24. But let's just talk about that first phrase first. The word friends is in quotes in the New Living Translation, and that's on purpose. It's like the guy writing Proverbs is kind of being sarcastic. You got any friends who are more like friends, like they might not always have your back, especially if it costs them something? Because some friends don't always act like friends. You know what I'm saying? Now, let me give you an example. They did a survey not that long ago with 1,500 women. I'm just saying, this was women, not dudes. I'm just telling you what's real. And one out of four women actually admitted to intentionally posting photos online where their friend looked ugly. <laughs> I actually think that's kind of funny. 25% of women, and that's just the ones who admitted it. Thanks a lot, friend. But before we get critical of the ladies, I don't want us to think that dudes are off the hook either. I remember my freshman year at Michigan State. I had a ton of new friends. I was just getting to know them, and they were really into partying. And let's just say we were nowhere near 21 years old. Now, I didn't get all judgy on them when they were putting back beers and shots like a bunch of crazy people, but there were a couple of my buddies who tried everything they could think of to get me to drink too, because they said they really wanted to see me drunk. In fact, the drunker they got, the harder they seem to try. Somehow it became a goal for some of my new friends. Did you have a friend who's committed to doing something certifiably stupid and they seem equally committed to wanting you to be stupid with them? Not necessarily the kind of friend that your parents are praying you get for a roommate someday, but oh well. Now, spoiler alert, my friend's relentless begging never worked on me. I get in a bunch of other kinds of trouble in college, but being drunk in Scott wasn't one of them. Maybe part of it was because my friends endlessly pestering me to drink and I just didn't want to let them win. I don't know. Now, all that to say, there's a whole range of what we can mean when we call somebody a friend, right? I want to ask you to do just a little thought exercise with me for a minute. Don't say anything out loud. Out of your four or five closest friends, are there any that are a little bit more like air quotes friends? Maybe not someone who's actively trying to destroy you, at least not that you know of, but you're not also super sure if they'd have your back when you were in a jam. So that's how this verse starts. Not super uplifting. But let's see if Landon can take this somewhere a little more positive. So I want to focus on the second half of that verse, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. Uh, what if you have a brother and he's the worst? That's probably not super encouraging to you. And Scott said this part would be better, and it is, I promise. Let's not jump to a negative conclusion too quickly. Okay, so here's what the writer of Proverbs wanted his audience to understand. Great friends are for, F-O-R, each other. Now, in the first century, family lines or genealogies were really important. Uh, you've seen that before in movies or books when people introduced themselves and said, I'm so-and-so, son of fill-in-the-blank. And in the New Testament, people were put in social classes based on where they were from and who their parents were. That's why Jesus was so remarkable, because he cared about people that no one else wanted to. So when it says a friend sticks closer than a brother, it means a ton. It means a true friend can be closer than coming from the same family line. It's closer than a brother. That means a lot today, but it was huge then. And I have friends, thankfully, that are like family, that stick close through thick and thin, and that's wonderful. But if I were you, I might be asking this question, okay? 
that's great, Landon, but what difference does it make if God's a part of your friendship? Because we haven't really got to the God part yet, and this is church, so when does that come in? Well, fantastic question. You know, I hear students all the time talking about they have their church friends and they have their school friends, okay? And here's the truth. I care way less about where those friends are from and more about how they're affecting the people in that friendship, okay? And that includes you. I'm not gonna tell you the only friendships are church friendships, but I do believe at my core that a Christ-centered friendship is the best friendship. And it doesn't mean you sit around and sing worship songs all day. No, a Christ-centered friendship is something different. So what is it, right? What's the difference? Well, the biggest difference that God can make in your friendships is reminding you that it's not all about you. Uh, listen to this scripture. Paul writes, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Now, that's different. Uh, think about it. Valuing others above yourself is different than what's natural to us. Like it or not, we're born with a selfish bent. Our first thought is what? Us. Our needs, our wants, our likes and dislikes. And, and I've learned this by having a newborn in my house. She doesn't care if it's convenient for us when she needs to eat. No, it's all about her and she'll scream until she gets what she wants. That has to be taught out of us. We have to learn selflessness and learn humility. We have to learn how to value others above ourselves. And God sets the example of valuing others above ourselves. And by doing that, you can become a great friend that's for others. And all of a sudden, you're cheering for their success. And if you do that, it can change your life. You know, it's amazing when people do that for you. You've experienced that before. When they care about you, so what if we decided right now, with God's help, to care about others, to be for others? So, to sum it up, basically this verse describes two different kinds of friends. But you've probably lived long enough to know that everybody's not all good or all bad, 100% for you or 100% against you. And so we've got a little challenge for you before small group happens. In just a minute, you're gonna get a little card with five boxes down the side. And I wanna ask you to put an initial next to each box, just initials, not names, representing the top five friends who you spend the most time with. Now, I know you probably have a friend in Chicago or Portland or Mexico City, but you probably also don't get to hang out with them every week. So just pick friends that are close by. And then in each box, put a number between one and four to represent how much you think that person is for you. Now, the number four means they're really for you, duh, four, four. The number one means, well, they might actually be posting ugly pictures of you online on purpose right now. Now, we're only using numbers one to four because there's no middle number, and that's on purpose. Most friends aren't actually just neutral right down the middle, right? So commit. Is it a three? Is it two? No two and a half's allowed, okay? Now, let me say, the goal of this is not to tell the people in your small group who's a person that you're friends with, who's actually not really that great of a friend. That's called gossip. And it's not cool and it's not what we're about here. When you talk in small group, I actually challenge you not to use names of people. That's not really the point of this. It's more to kind of do a relational inventory for yourself. But let me be clear about one other thing. If someone's a one or a two, it doesn't necessarily mean they shouldn't be your friend. It just means that you might need to be careful with that friendship. You don't know if they're always for you. And you probably don't want all friends who are ones and twos. We're all better off if we've got a friend or two who's a four, right? Always for us. But now a similar thought. If you've got only fours on your card, you might think that's good. But you might need a friend who's a one or a two. Why, why would I say that? Because then hopefully they can learn from you what a friend looks like who actually sticks closer than a brother. And maybe they could be that kind of a friend one day too. Now this whole card thing is gonna take you less than a minute. But I think it'll really help your small group conversation. So thanks for doing it. Well, what a great challenge by Scott. And I hope that this simple exercise is helpful to you. And, and, and I want you to remember that you don't have to look very far to find friends that care about you, uh, those that are really for you. Uh, they might be in front of you right now. And look, we're not perfect because we go to church, but I, I just hope and pray that uh, as, whenever you're watching this video that you can be encouraged and strengthened in our friendships as we learn what it looks like to be for others and these people around you right now can help do that for you. That could make an amazing difference in your school and on your teams and in whatever you're involved in and it starts right here. 
We love you, and we'll see you next week.